Um, so the first item we'll be looking at uh, within the text amendment are travel accommodations, uh, hotel parking. So the uh, first change on the, the top bullet there is to reduce the per room requirement from 1.25 down to one space per room. And within that 1.0 number, uh, employee parking is considered? Correct. And to me, if employee parking is already accounted for in the 1.0, I would like to see something in this amendment that clarifies that there has to be designated parking for employees at peak demand of employees. So it can park 1.0, but aside from the parking master plans, just in this base understanding, I would like to see language that quantifies the number of employees at peak demand and that be included in, not in addition to the 1.0 to ensure that employee parking when it's at its peak is not burdening public parking. That's so you're saying thoughts. in addition to the 1.0 for, for public, for employee parking, is that what I heard? Not in addition to, it, not, I, it just needs to be specifically accounted for. So designated spots gotcha. is, is one of my thoughts here that needs to be addressed. Gotcha. As part of this text amendment. Uh, also with this understanding that uh, <clears throat> developments can use a parking master plan to further reduce the number to 0.8, I personally don't have an objection to this. I would, though, however, uh, amend this text amendment to allow staff only a 10% variance, and any variance above that up to the 20% would be reviewed by the appropriate board or council. Vice Chair Young. Um, I just want to reinforce what Ch uh, Commissioner Scarborough just said about the employee parking because, you know, when, when I drive to my office in the morning, I'm there, you know, 7, 7.30 when I'm arriving and leaving 5.36 whenever it might be. And I would say that employee parking or employees, I'm seeing as the biggest offenders as not parking on hotel properties. <laughs> I see a lot of people being dropped off, uh, parking in adjacent private property parking lots, and parking on public parking stalls, and they'll come out every two hours, move their car six inches so the police officer with the white chalk doesn't match up again. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, I think the employee parking is, is very important to consider in this whole thing, not just guest parking. So. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, I'll yield back. So we're talking about hotels and reduction from 1.25 to a 1.0. That on the paper, uh, that on paper sounds reasonable, but it's, um, it, there's kind of some other stuff going on there. And one of the things I wanted to ask about was this variance, this administrative variance that uh, Commissioner Scarbo actually brought up. And uh, first, my first question, Mr. Clough, is how long has that variance, that administrative variance, been in place? If you may or may not may or may not know the history of that, Chair Alessio, uh, Commissioner Graham, um, I, I don't know off the top of my head uh, when that was was first first put into place. Um, I, I, I do know, you know, as, as far back as I've been dealing with it, which would be at least the last ten years, um, I, I believe that's. Uh, been in place. What percentage of in the downtown area do hotels request that variance? Is that like a kind of a perfunctory like it's a given they all request it or is it more of an exception? Uh, Commissioner Graham what I can say is um, over you know I would say over the last um, four to five years um, I, I believe almost all of them have requested a parking reduction through the use of a parking master plan in the Old Town area. Okay, and all of them. And ha, do, you, do you know what the quantities say in the last five years of hotels that have been added? Like 10 or 5 or, pardon my ignorance. Yeah, I, I apologize, Commissioner Graham. I don't, I don't have the specific number, but, you know, I, I think it's in reasonably in the 5 to 10 range. And they've and they've all requested the the variance. Correct. To, to 
to the best of my knowledge. So it, it seems, though, that, well, we all, I mean, we heard Mr. Clough say that with, between the 5 to 10 in the past five years, every single one, every single hotel has requ requested the administrative reduction, parking reduction. And I think it kind of seems like they've all gotten it, maybe. Not for sure, but maybe. So it's kind of, it, to me, it kind of feels like we move this from point one, 1.25 to 1, we are moving it to closer to 0.8. The other side of that is that I wanted to talk about next is the 5,000 square foot exemption. Can we talk a little bit about that, Mr. Clough? Does that basically kind of mean that every hotel is 5,000 square, when it comes to parking requirements, that every hotel is 5,000 square feet smaller? Uh, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Graham, um, the, the idea behind the 5,000 square foot exemption um, would be, you, you know, geared towards those uh, ancillary commercial uses like conference space or restaurants um, that are uh, within the same building as the hotel. Do other cities have that exemption? Um, Commissioner Graham, I, we, we didn't specifically um, pull data from other cities relative to hotels. Um, the, the data that we were working with was uh, based on existing uh, hotel developments within the city of Scottsdale. Do, do you, are you aware of any other cities that have an exemption like that? I, I can't specifically say off the top of my head. I, I think it makes so much sense to, I think the 1.25 is excessive. We've seen, we've seen new technologies, we've seen new trends. But it seems like we're also doing stuff to kind of sort of chip away at it. I don't know if maybe that's the right term, but the 5,000 square foot exemption, that doesn't seem like anybody else is doing that. And nobody here is really sure if they are, and that's okay. But it seems like, that seems kind of like something you would do if you're trying to promote development. And we want Scottsdale to be uniquely Scottsdale. I also, I also have questions, and I asked many of my questions about the 20% waiver. I, 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 I mean, there's other things you could ask about that, and we don't need to go into that here. I think, you know, Commissioner Scarborough had a, had a great idea as far as maybe moving that to 10 percent, maybe 5 percent, something like that. But kind of looking at that, 20 percent, we talked about 20 percent for a hotel that requires 200-something rooms, you're going to off the top and we, at 40-something rooms just vanish, or 40-something parking spots just vanish. And then you have... Um, you know, the, then you have the 5,000 5, square foot exemption. So I think it just raises a lot of questions. So with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I will return it to you. Thank you for allowing me to ask those questions. I really appreciate it. Um, Mr. Clough, understanding that we're talking about private parking here and we're talking about doing a 1.0 uh, per room, is there any contemplation within our code that states or within the parking amendments here that states that this parking would be at no cost to the employee or at no co no additional cost to the hotel guest um, because I could see that a downtown hotel that charges $25 a day for an employee or $25 a day for a guest um, those people may save that $25 per day and park in one of our free um, parking structures that we have that might be very close and adjacent to and they would use the free public parking and then we would have a private parking structure that was nearly empty and we would be using our free public parking to accommodate employees and guests. So does any of this um, contemplate um, cost associated with private parking? Chair Alessio and members of the commission, um, there's not anything in the new that's in the ordinance. However, um, there already is a requirement in the code specific to downtown that uh, all required parking needs to be free. So that would also apply to uh, these hotels. So required parking for employees or required parking for guests as well? Oh. It would include um, all of the above. Okay. So this would be free parking. So we would not be basically pushing guests and employees to our free public parking. There would be no incentive, if you will, for them to move to the free public parking. 
based on what we see here today.